Hi Year 5, I hope you're all okay. It feels like such a long time since I last spoke to you on Thursday. I hope you enjoyed your long weekend and you um, celebrated VE Day and you had a great time. So as promised, today we're going to start a new unit of literacy and this unit is going to be a non-fiction unit. So you're going to end up with a finished information text at the end of the unit. Now we've written um, information text before in school. Um, so as I'm talking through today, there might be a couple of clues that reminds you um, of what our information text was about last time. Um, so hopefully that will cast your mind right back because we wrote them before Christmas. Um, and hopefully you can um, use that information to help you uh, write this piece of work. So, a few things we're going to do today. I'm going to introduce the new unit. I'm going to talk to you about the stimulus. Um, and then I'm going to read you a model text. And then I'm going to give you a couple of little tasks to do. So you might find that the workload feels quite small again compared to last week. Uh, because we're starting a un new unit. So enjoy that. Right. So our model text is based, or our unit, is based upon a story or uh, it's also a film called Where the Wild Things Are. So in 1963, Marie Sindank wrote the picture book Where the Wild Things Are. In the story, Max, on the night he wore his wolf suit, went on a magical journey to the land of wild things and became the king of these strange creatures. Eventually, he missed home and made the journey back to his bedroom where it all began. So I'm going to post a link um, in the description and that's a link for you to have a look at of um, the story being read. So it'll be somebody reading you the story of where the wild things are and you can look at the pictures. So you don't have to do that, that's only if you want to. It just might be nice to listen to a story. I know I like listening to stories. So um, our information text, the model information text should I say, is based on this creature here. And it's called the rice swan zebta. So it's um, a mix of a rhino and a swan. Um, it's got the O of the rhino as well. Uh, it's got a zebra and the end of a cheetah. So can you see? We've got the rhino, the zebra, the swan and the cheetah. So it's called a rye swan o zebta. So hopefully this um, will tell you that your information text is going to be based on a made-up animal. So it should be quite fun for us to do. Because um, we can use our imagination here and make it as wacky as we like. So I'm going to read you the example um, model uh, information text now. So this is hopefully what yours will sound like at the end of the unit. So this is what we call a waggle, what a good one looks like. So... The rice swan zebtar is an extremely rare flying creature from the subfamily Rhino felinae. Rice swan zebtars, although uncommon, are easily to identify as they are a mixture of four distinct animals. They have the head of a rhino, the body of a swan and zebra, and the tail of a cheetah. They have a wingspan of 2.8 metres and can grow to over 5 metres in length, which means they are the largest flying creature since pterodactyl dinosaurs. Additionally, their skin tends to be covered in feathers, but as they get older, the zebra stripes become more prominent. Their tails are covered in fur and their heads are covered in leathery grey skin. However, juveniles are born completely bald and develop their fur, feathers and colourings when they mature. Most rhino, ry, swano zebtars are found across South Africa although some have been known to inhabit the deepest rainforest of Venezuela. Amazingly, rice swan over zebtars like to bury and therefore make their homes underground. They use their rhino tusks to gouge the sun-baked soil and tunnel deep down to create soil cocoons to sleep in. Some have been known to sleep in trees, but only the largest kapok branches can support their enormous weight. All rice swan zebtars are carnivores and only eat meat. Interestingly, their favourite prey is the springbok antelope, which they descend on from great heights and then wrestle to the ground. 
They have also been known to devour many smaller mammals, such as African wildcats and aardvarks. Furthermore, many will guzzle gallons of water a day, and sadly, these creatures can cause huge water shortages during the dry season. As well as being the largest flying animal in the world, the rice swan as ebtar is also the most talented. The majority can use their vocal cords to create the most beautiful morning chorus as the sun rises. This is with the exception of the young males. Their voices do not develop until they are 15 years old and some explorers have reported that their calls are high-pitched, squeaky and very unpleasant to listen to. In addition to this, and despite their size, all rice swan as ebtars are tremendously agile. They can stand on one leg for long stretches of time, roll and flip whilst running or flying, and can balance on narrow branches and cliff edges when surveying for prey. For many years, scientists have been secretly tracking the rice swan as ebtars in the wild, and now know that there are approximately 625 roaming the savannas and nesting in rainforests. Amazingly, however, there have been rare sightings in other parts of the world, so just maybe the rice swan as ebtar will be spotted in a neighbourhood near you in the not so distant future. So that was the example of the information text. Um, hopefully you will remember writing one of those. Um, so today's task is, I would like you to either listen to the story again, that, that I, sorry, listen to the information text again that I've read, or look at um, it written down. I will post it on our blogs. Um, and then I'd like you to make a note of any words that you don't know the meaning of. Okay, and then I'd like you to find out the meaning of them. So we do this in guided reading a lot, don't we? So um, make a note of any words you don't know the meaning of, and then your first task is to find the meaning of them. So you can either use a dictionary or the internet to do that. Um, your second task today is it's called Interests, Questions and Favourites. It's a bit like reading like a reader. So I would like you... Um, to copy and complete these sentences. So, I was really interested in So you could say, I was really interested in learning about their habitat or I was really interested in learning about what they wanted to eat. Um, I would like to know more about So I would like to know more about um, where they came from or I would like to know more about um, what they do to, like you could say, let me think, um, what they do in their free time or I would like to know more about um, if there are any other animals like them, like is there any other animals in the... Um, in their subfamily. So is there any other animals in the rhino felinae subfamily? And the last sentence I'd like you to copy and complete are my top facts are. So I want you to list three things that you found really useful uh, or you found really interesting from that model text about the rye um, swanos ebtar. So I really liked that they, um, my interest in fact was they like to um, live underground. I like that they, they drink lots of water. And another fact that I really liked was that they attack their prey from above. Okay, so just have a look at that now. Um, so make a note of that. You can do it like I've done it just in sentences or um, another way of setting it out is like this can you see that can you see with some speech bubbles like that if you want to make it a bit more interesting it's entirely up to you so don't forget then to send us um, 
uh, your copied and completed sentences, um, a list of words you didn't know the meaning to and their definitions. Um, and you can send that to year5 at bluecoatfederation.co.uk. Um, and don't forget, if you haven't already, please do send us um, your finding story from last week uh, and we'll have a look at that as well. Okay, so come back tomorrow then and we'll carry on. And I'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Bye.